You're listening to a lifestyle podcast with Lavoni and Sarah. Our goals to inspire good health and well being, empowerment, beauty, and joy, offering support and friendship as we share our journeys in the hopes it helps you. Hello, my friends, and thanks for tuning in to what was once the Waiting Room Podcast. I'm Lavoni, and together with my co host Sarah, we want to let you know our podcast has changed its name from the Waiting Room Podcast to simply Lavoni and Sarah. Now, along with the name change, we're doing some rebranding and developing a website, all very exciting, and we'd love you to come along on this adventure with us. The Waiting Room Podcast is a no-nonsense approach to losing weight and feeling better, peppered with helpful lifestyle tips and cooking inspiration. Join me, Sarah Holton, and me, Lavoni Walker, as we talk frankly about the overall health implications of being overweight, what we're doing to get healthy, and our journeys to inspire others with a simplistic approach to eating thoughtfully and living abundantly. Welcome to episode three. We're going to be discussing navigating the nutritional misinformation highway. With a deluge of inaccurate information online, people calling themselves an expert, others promoting the latest diet fad or telling us what to eat or what not to eat, with little to no nutritional and health qualifications to back it up. Is it any wonder people are confused when it comes to what foods we require to lose weight and feel healthier? Um, Livoni, I'm going to let you kick off on this because you've got strong views and lots of information to share with us. So um, over to you. There's just, there's so much incorrect information out there regarding nutrition. It's ludicrous, uh, misleading and often deceitful. Uh, I know that you know, I've shared with you several um, accounts online of people that have lost a lot of weight. And, of course, you're always curious when you want to lose weight how they've yeah. done it. And often it's just a, a hard sell for, you know, yeah. a particular diet that you have to pay for or shakes or whatever. And There's even ones that we've seen recently where when you then delve further into it, they've had surgery. Right, uh, right, you know, right. Stomach surgery, so then that's why you get such drastic results. But yeah, you're right. Karen. And and I mean, I think that if you if somebody's on a diet and they've lost weight and they've managed to bring down their blood pressure, their blood glucose, uh, their cholesterol, you know, any uh, health issues like that, that that were problematic, that's great. But the question mm-hmm. I think is is it sustainable? And that, if, if, for anybody wanting to lose weight, it's definitely something they need to look at. Is it going to be sustainable? Not, is it a diet for eight weeks or is it a diet for 12 weeks? Um, and then you're just, you know, waiting to get to the end of it and then you get to the end of it and then yeah. you're just back to square one or you're going to start it. And I know that I am uh, at fault here. I think, okay, I'm going to start a diet on Monday. And what you do is you just think, okay, it's like a license to eat whatever you want. Yeah, Yeah, for, you know, three days or however many days you've got coming up to it. Or you think, oh, well, it's my birthday next weekend, so I don't want to start yet. And I think if you want to lose weight, the time to start is now, like right now. Just don't, don't say, well, I've got to go shopping or I've got to clean out the pantry or another thing I know that I've been guilty of and I know people do, I'll just eat it all now. That way yeah. it's gone. That way it's out of the house. I, you know, it's just, it's a bad way of looking at it. And I guarantee about 50 pounds that I'm carrying is from doing things like that. Yeah. But I think the question that when people do want to lose weight feel better is get their health in check is they have, you know, there's, there's many factors. Uh, and one is wh- where you live and what foods you're used to eating. And one thing that, that I have found um, with some diets that I've read is, you know, they cut some cut whole food groups out and then others will cut things like carrots, sweet potato, mangoes, papaya, things that are uh, maybe higher in carbohydrates, still high in fiber, but yeah. essential 
you know, because of the vitamin A, the beta carotene, essential for a number of things like lowering blood pressure, um, you know, helping your skin, immunity, um, you know, encouraging like a good pH in your body. You, you can't tell if a diet tells you to, to not eat those sort of things, then yeah. you need to move on. So for and also, me, like based on what, what are they basing that information on? That's right. The thing, isn't it? Right. For, you know, for me, I grew up on a lot of orange, red, the purple, you know, vegetables like beetroot or beets, um, you know, mangoes. We always had mangoes in the house. Um, mm -hmm. My father was from North Queensland and we used to get sent down crates of mangoes. So mangoes were something, you know, we'd eat all the time. Um, sweet potato or kumara as it's called there, pumpkin squash as, um, you know, as it's called here in the U.S., so it, it just depends. It depends what you're used to eating. And I know when I moved from Australia to, to Canada, my diet changed a lot and I wasn't eating so many of those things. And I used to eat carrots all the time or put them in my yeah. vegetable juice. And so and now um, I find I crave those things. So it, I don't know. It was like an epiphany I had. This was several months ago and I thought, I do not eat enough of the orange stuff like I used to. So yeah. I introduced them back into my diet. And, and I think it does make a difference, you know, I mean, for your eyes, your skin, just everything. But it depends yeah. where you grew up too, you know, where you live. People in countries like Thailand, tropical countries, they tend to eat, you know, or drink the coconut water, eat more coconut milk. If you've yep. never had that and you go on a diet that says, okay, replace dairy, have coconut milk, and you think, oh, well, it's on the diet, I can eat an ab yep. or eat or drink an abundance of it, and you've never had it before, you can have adverse reaction to that. Well, yeah, your body's going to go into sort of not so much for shock, but it's going to have some sort of reaction to having something in a huge amount that it's never had before, so right. that makes sense. And that's often the problem when people do go on specific diets is they think it's a license to eat other things like, oh, yeah. I'm on low carb, so therefore I can eat bacon, eggs, any amount of cheese that I want. But yeah. it's it's about moderation. It's about sustainability. It's also about what you can afford because not yeah. everybody can afford grass-fed meat. So yeah. I know some people say it's expensive to eat well or to eat healthily um it doesn't this it doesn't have to be the case there are no. um some places here in the u.s that um do they like ugly f fruit and vegetables yeah, yeah. i'm sure yeah. they have them there um a scheme here that's called um the odd box scheme that you right. can find up to and they'll deliver it to your front door. Right. But it's all the misshapen vegetables and things, and it basically means no zero waste as well, because obviously those vegetables and products would be going to be get written off because they're not picture perfect for the supermarkets. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. And also things like frozen fruits and vegetables, like you know, don't discount them as well. Yeah. I know a lot of people do. I like to have, or at the moment, I tend to change my diet up, but at the moment. I've been having a smoothie for breakfast and um, using frozen berries. So, you know, yeah. the frozen fruit is usually picked and processed at, when I say processed, that means just frozen, cut up, frozen, whatever, um, and packaged at the, you know, right then and yeah. there. It yeah. hasn't sat in a store for ages or been on trucks, you know, Particularly for things like smoothies, it's ideal because obviously with the frozen berries, you get that really nice sort of creaminess and, exactly. and thickness to the smoothie yeah. anyway, so it's absolutely perfect. Yeah, and then, you know, I just sneak things in, like some spinach in there, some flax. Um, Do you? Yeah, like sometimes. With your, yeah, you, you can't even taste it. Just a handful of baby spinach leaves. Does um, it not make a funny colour? It goes a darker colour. I don't mean yeah. I don't put a lot in. But um, some a little pomegranate juice. Sometimes I put yogurt in it, just plain yogurt. Sometimes I put avocado in, gives it that creaminess. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't tell somebody this is how you need to eat 
without looking at their circumstances. Yeah. And, and people need to, to be aware of that when they see things like a diet online or someone that's lost a hundred pounds and they think, Oh, I'm going to do that. And they go and they spend money and they don't stick to it because there's a, maybe a lot of prep. There's a lot of money yeah. or there's foods that they don't like. And that's often the case. It's pointless going on a particular diet if you're eating stuff that you don't like. Well, it's not going to be sustainable because it's not part of your every day. But do you know what I'm hearing when you're talking about this? I think that's sprung to my mind is there's something very different really, isn't there? But when people are trying to sell you something, it's a diet or a program or something. And by the very nature of that, it feels like there's a start and an end to it. Right. Now, I suppose if you then say, well, it's the purpose is to reduce your body mass, lose weight, then there is a start and an end. However, as you just described a while ago, you know, the end is then quite a dangerous place to be because what happens when you get to an end and we all know people that have been on a diet and then when it's finished, well, it goes on too long and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I just, you know, you can't maintain it. Really what we're describing is it's got to be a lifestyle change. There is no diet which is going to last forever, which is then going to fix things. So really to make this long term, it's got to be changes which are going to be literally changing your lifestyle because otherwise all that's going to happen is you're going to regain weight again it's always going to flip in my belief it's going to go up a bit down anyway right. because things influence you know your frame of mind external influences where you feel stressed so you don't have the time to prep in the way you normally would you know all of these different things particularly if I'm mega mega busy then I don't eat as well because I just grab quicker food um but a diet seems like it's, it's a plan, isn't it? It's something which is going to be just for a period of time. And is that real? Is that really going to give us what we're wanting at the end of this? We're talking about, yes, losing weight. But we're also talking about living well and living abundantly. And sustainability. Um, That's the thing. Yeah. And so, then, you know, and I, so I'm, I'm feeling for me personally that I, I don't ever want to say that I'm on a diet ever again. No. Because actually doing that is putting me in a box. It's, it's putting pressure on me to do something in a way that's been prescribed in a program or within a diet plan or whatever. Um, now, there are lots of things that we can pick up from these diet plans or programs that would probably help us with regards to choices that we're going to make. But fundamentally, it's not, a, it's never going to be that anymore, is it? And yeah. as you just described, you know, there's, there's people that will spend hundreds of pounds on signing up to something um, only to three, six months later, be then sort of find themselves off it back at the beginning whatever it might be um and and there is there is an argument for people that are grossly grossly overweight that need to lose weight quite quickly for surgery or their health is seriously under pressure that things actually were how the, the shakes started you know way way back so the sort of the cambridge shakes and things that all started because people really needed you know doctors mm -hmm. etc but they needed to lose weight people then saw the results that they were getting and thinking i'll have a bit of that thanks because that's you right. know a quick result. now i've known it worked for a number of people it's really worked you know they've shifted a lot of you know six seven eight stone and they've managed to maintain it so hats off to them because that's not easy to do no. they may have gained a little bit back but not like you know all of it um but the willpower that it takes to live off just a shake for four or five months is unbelievable. And I've well, tried them. Have you tried the shakes? I mean, I've tried them and it's just awful after it. Even after two weeks, I'm thinking I've had enough oh, of this. I couldn't do it. I can't with my work anyway. For no. me, you know, I, I test recipes, I develop recipes. I, you know, I'm always working with food. I'm styling it, taking pictures of it, writing about it. It, it has to be sustainable. But I think... If people want to lose weight and just, you know, feel better overall, they need to start now. And there's things that they can do immediately. So that's cut back on portion sizes, cut back on processed food and takeaway mm -hmm. food. I'm not saying eliminate it completely because I think yeah. human nature is if you say you can't have something or someone tells you that, you want it. So yeah. um, just cut back on sugar, B read things. If you yeah. are one for buying, you know, yogurt with fruit, whatever, read the, read the package yeah. um, because a lot of things do have added sugar in, especially if they're low fat. Um, 
include like one vegetable and one more fruit in your diet yeah. of a day. Just small changes, um, you know, maybe some more fiber in the way of just a small handful of nuts um, or some seeds. But the small changes have big impact. If you want to save money, you're not just going to turn around and have $10,000 in the bank. It yeah. happens in increments. And that's drip, the drip feeding, isn't it? Yeah, drip feeding. Drip, so yeah, it's so bit by bit by bit. And and if people stop thinking that they need to get from point A to point B as fast as possible and and look at this as more of a, a journey and a, a fun thing and just maybe discovering new recipes or new ingredients that they haven't tried, it will make a really big difference. Because, yeah. I mean, it's like anything, persistence. That's yeah, yeah. perseverance, persistence, you know, and commitment, commitment to themselves, to their health. It, uh, you know, they have to do that. Also, yeah. and we're going to uh, talk about this in an upcoming episode, but if they haven't dealt with the emotional shit in their life, yeah, uh, the reason why they either have carried weight their whole life or why they put on weight to begin with, if they haven't looked at that, no matter yeah. what diet they go on, at some stage they're going to fail. It'll be back up again. Yeah. It'll just happen again. So, you know, small changes and and look at triggers and understand, you know, the, the triggers. Like why suddenly do you feel like you just need to consume vast amounts of food? Has yeah. something happened to you that day? Um, yeah. Yeah, I know we'll talk about this um, at a later date, but I'm really aware of that. And actually, the more conscious you can be of that, the, the better it is. It definitely helps. You know, if, if even if it doesn't mean that it stops you doing it entirely, it definitely influences how you handle it. And when you suddenly you sort of go, right, no, stop, it's going out of control and all of those sorts of things. Right. But Being aware. Thinking, yeah. And what you were saying about losing weight and um, my son, he'll be mortified me talking about him, but I'm going to. He... um. <laughs> he he gained loads of weight during our lockdown over here um it was during his gcse period so he was we were trying to do homeschooling it was absolute hell to be quite honest and through that time he spent such a large amount of time in his room and um it was just me and him so there was nothing up you know particularly to break up the day and he just ate junk food rubbish food too much food and he gained a lot of weight he was always someone that was slightly up and down and, and on the bigger rather than smaller side but it really went out of control during those two years um he then sort of sat his exams and came out the other side and he could really feel it you know he he was self-conscious about it and particularly coming to the you know sort of 16 years old you suddenly start to become quite aware of, of how you look and everything um he found his he found his thing he found boxing and through an external factor which is what i was going to say Sometimes it's external factors that push you, isn't it? Someone else basically took hold of him and just said, now's the time. Right. Now is the time to make this change. And I'd had a conversation with him over the whole of his upbringing. It wasn't just sort of suddenly in this time, but about stop eating that, stop doing this, you know, don't eat all of that rubbish stuff. But it just, it never really sunk in. Someone else stepped in, someone else that he respected. And actually, I think could admire because he'd done it himself and actually he wanted to be in that position really took hold of him and absolute credit to that young man you know we've talked about this right. before without fail every day he went out and did a huge amount of exercise because he wanted to be the best boxer that he could be and he lost three and a half stone in a, in a, about four and a half five months um and he's a different young man now right. I mean, you've, you know, feels you better you can, Feels better yeah, about himself he, within himself. You know, his confidence, his self esteem, the value that he's given. To, don't get me wrong; we all have moments, but you know the right, value that right. he's given And you know, it's we now could go through a sort of up and down. So when he has a, a boxing bout coming up, it's really more intense with his training and his food. Um, but but that was an outside influence that really really drove him. And I think sometimes individually we can almost think, well, what's the point? You know, what's the point? You know, I've tried before and I failed or you go through, for me, particularly go through a cycle. Does it really matter if I'm overweight? Who cares anyway? Well, I care and I'm going to do it. And you just talk yourself into it, talk yourself out of it again. Right, you know, right. it goes round and round. 
And I think we've all got to find our thing for making this work. So as we spoke about in the last um, two episodes, my thing now is my health because mm -hmm. of the surgery that I've had and making the most of it similar for you now too. Right. Um, I don't, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be 47 this year. And I just sort of think, well, I've really got to start looking after my health a little bit more because, you know, these things matter as you get a little bit older and you've got to, you know, be careful about what you're doing to your body. Um, and we've even talked about, you know, off the podcast, we've talked about the fact that arthritis is coming in mm -hmm. on our hands and all of these things. You suddenly become really aware and think, oh, I've got to do the best I can do right. to help myself. So at that point, I guess, you could understand why people would then turn to something which is being advertised that seems like a miracle. Out of desperation. Yeah, because you think, what am I going to do? And actually, yep. I have to do this now. And, and that's when people take, you know, quite easily take your money off you. Right, like, right, I'll right. Do that. Yeah. I'll do that. And, and, you know, we have to be really brutal about this. Most of those people are there to make money because obviously mm -hmm. that's what their job, that's what they're there to do. Um, and so that's what you've got to be careful of is what is your outside influence? It's a really good thing sometimes to have an outside influence, but be careful what it is and then be careful how you channel it. Because actually, if you then just then turn in desperation to giving your money to something else, that could be used for even joining a gym if you didn't, right. you know, if you didn't at home or going swimming, because, you know, even everything costs right. going to a swimming, swimming baths two or three times a week. So I would say for me, a better use and spend of my money is to not pay someone else to tell me what to do. It's to then put it into something that I know is like going to help me because it's moving more. It's buying some food that's good for me because sometimes it isn't as cheap to do it that way, like you said. You know, it's it's being self-centered a little bit more, isn't it? And not allowing other people to tap into your To influence you so much because that's what people do. They, they tap into your guilt yeah. and, like I said, the desperation because when you want to lose weight, you do feel desperate, um, yeah. you know, whether it's your health or whether you want to look nice because you're going somewhere because that's okay to to feel like that. But um, they definitely tap into that and there's often deceit and then people spend the money and then they have a certain level of guilt because now yeah. they've spent the money and they're still not doing it or they try it and think, oh, gosh, this is so complicated yeah. And so I, I wrote um, recipes for developed recipes for a cookbook a couple of years ago. It was during lockdown and it was all to do with macros. And, you know, I have a program that figures all that out. But I thought oh, I could never do something like this because not everybody has that program. As a nutritionist, yeah. I have the program, but not everybody has that. And trying to figure out your macros and, you know, how much, which is your fat and your carbs yep. and, and everything. But um was just so complicated and so much meal prep. And I'm, you know, hey, I'm all for doing a bit of meal prep. Yeah. But this yeah. was like over the top. And if you're, if you're then subscribed to something like that, you, you know, and you can't, if it's not sustainable, no. Now it's a waste you of just, money. It's, yeah, it's now you just feel money. shit because it's wasted money. money. Exactly. Yeah. Go on then. What, what um in your past have you done what program? Like? <laughs> okay, well <laughs> I did um Atkins ever so briefly, but I like bread too much, so that was okay. just I do yep. like a sandwich for lunch. Um Scarsdale diet, that's an old Not one. Good. That's an old one. That's where you eat, you know, like bananas one day. <laughs> tomatoes another but you know the funny thing was when I was doing I do it with my mother my mother was just an absolute health yeah. nut and she didn't need to lose weight but we were always on a diet I certainly didn't need to lose weight but I would do it with her and yeah, yeah we'd lose weight but it was just miserable I mean yeah. we both loved food and you know from a family of good cooks so we were always cooking and eating you know trying a new restaurant or something um what is that atkins scarsdale um atkins is low carb um oh i like stuck my toe in the paleo water but i followed that more than than did it juicing right. juicing yeah i mean i do like to do that sometimes just you know a, a juice yeah. like a veggie juice 
but not for days on end. Measurable. Oh, God. Just so bitchy. Um, what else have I tried? Oh, Fit for Life. That's another one. That's one where you don't eat. Um, and this one, you could, it, it was good because you could still eat a lot of stuff, but you couldn't have, like, your carbs, like your starches and your proteins together. So yeah, you could okay. have a potato, but not with a steak. Now, that sounds like years ago I did Slimming World. And Slimming World has changed here over the years. It changes the way it does things. But back when I did it, um, that was the same thing. So we had red days and green days. And if you were on a red day, it was meat with vegetables, but no carbs. And if you were on a green day, you could have the carbs like a jacket potato, et cetera, but you couldn't have any protein like fish or meat or anything with it. So that sounds very similar. Mm. And actually, I lost a lot of weight when I stuck to the swimming world and I did really well. Um, but as soon as I didn't follow plan anymore, then I regained weight again. Right, 95% um, people because, do. It wasn't because of plan's fault. It's because I was then just overeating because mentally or psychologically, I thought, well, I'm not on the diet anymore. So I'll just so have I just what I want. go back to, yeah. Which right. is the danger of being on and being off. Right. Because actually, you're on, you stuck to it and you did exactly as they told you and it always worked. As soon as you come off it, which is ridiculous because you're still the same person and still eating right. food, anyway, that's when I just thought I'll stuff it and then I just ate whatever I wanted and then basically gained weight again. There's, there um, was another one I thought of too. It's I, I think it was 17 days. I, I can't remember why they came up with 17 days. The green bean diet. <laughs> Have you heard of that one? No. <laughs> yeah. What, you just eat green beans? You eat green beans. I can't remember much about it apart from... It, were, it, it went for 17 days. There's also right. the eight-week blood sugar diet where you only yeah. consume 800 calories a day, um, which is good. If people have very high blood sugar, it will help them, like you were saying, if people need to get weight off quickly. Yeah, sure. But it's, yeah. you know, again, it's not sustainable. Um, I like to look forward to my meals. Well, I do look forward to my meals yeah. If I wake up in the morning and I think, oh, God, I've just got to have green juice or something like that or nothing, yeah. then I just just kill me now, you know. Yeah. It, it it has to be something that I can keep doing. I can remember when I was a young girl, my mum did the cabbage soup diet. Oh, yeah, done and... that one too. Oh, God, yuck. Yeah. Thankfully, I was too young to be doing it. But all I could remember is the smell of the cabbage mm -hmm. seeds throughout the whole yeah. house. And I kind of thinking, I do not want to eat that. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I've done that one as well. Um, but, you know, it's and they're still around. I think all those diets seem to, to still be around. Things, you know, come and go, the South Beach diet, you know, all of those. But, but fundamentally, each one of those things, the reason that they work, through different reasons. And James Smith, if you follow him on Instagram or um, Facebook, is the absolute king of um, explaining this properly. But fundamentally, every single one of those, the reason that they work is that they are cutting calories. Mm -hmm. So whether they're cutting out carbs, which means that you have cut calories, or whether they are putting you on, obviously, 800 calories a day is a massive, you know, right. restriction. Or whether it's, um, oh, you know, every, every single one of them is just a, even Slimming World and Weight Watchers, all they're doing is cutting calories now particularly i've done weight watches and weight watches does work but the reason being that the point system that they give you give you loads of points used if you have something which is processed so like a snack bar or a chocolate bar right. or crisp or whatever, you've used probably two-thirds of your day's allocation by having one of those things right so th their selling point is there's nothing that you can't eat, which is true. Right. But if you've eaten a chocolate bar, you've got next to nothing left to eat for the rest of right. the day. So the way that that works is funnily enough, because there's loads of calories in something processed. Right. In the bar. So again, still what they're doing is restricting your calories, but not telling you that that's what they're doing. And so every single one of these programs is the reason that they get success is because they are cutting calories because the fundamental is you have to have less calories in and they're going out to lose weight right so 
which is why it's very hard on exercise alone to lose weight because you can't burn off enough compared to what you're putting in mm-hmm. but if you restrict what's going in like you said smaller portions right perfect making a star and increase a little bit of exercise which right. means you learnt a little bit more the gap between what you've had in and what you're burning out will increase slightly which means that you are going to lose weight with the benefit of the exercises obviously your bones your muscles your heart health you know the blood flow everything is going to get better from doing some exercise as well so right. it's an absolute bonus but you don't have to do exercise to lose weight you can just do it from you know reducing calories but mm-hmm. this is where not being on a diet and looking as a lifestyle change kicks in because if you look at that restricted calories but only a small restriction you know lowering it a little bit maybe a couple of calories or whatever less you're not going to lose a lot of weight fast but what you will do over a year is lose a lot of weight right because it will chip away at it like Mm -hmm. you said at the beginning of this you know small steps chip 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 um but what you're not going to get is that instant gratification of like, wow, I've got on the scales next week and I'm five pounds lighter. It's right. just you're just not going to get that. No. But it depends on if if you can somehow influence the way that you think and thinking, I'm not going to go on a diet, which means this start, stop and an instant result. I'm going to change my lifestyle. And I know that it's going to take me 12 months. And I know that I can enjoy food during that period, but I'm going to have to restrict it. That for me is when you cut through all of this misinformation, all of these people that are trying to sell you something, all of this, you know, on off type of mentality, you would stop all of that. Um, And it does mean, as you said, then you can still have some foods which potentially wouldn't be on a diet plan. So if you wanted to have a takeaway once a month, then that's perfectly, you know, you can fit that into your lifestyle. Could you have it every week or twice a week? Probably not. No. Because it's not. You're it's the same with cheat all. days. I hate that yeah. because that that then is putting certain foods in a box to say yeah. that they're naughty or whatever, and that again makes you want to crave them. Like trying to yeah. get out of that mentality that we've been told over and over again. I you know, if if people looked at what they like for starters, whether it's in movement you know I like to dance um and I like to bike rides and swim I can't right now because it's the middle of winter here in Indiana in North America (laughs) um but I've got an indoor bike and I like it because it's a recumbent one I can put a show on I can watch it 30 minutes I wouldn't sit on the couch in the middle of the day or in the morning and watch a show but there I am I get to watch you know a show yeah. and I'm pedaling away. Um, so if people look at what it is they like, whether it's food or movement, and that is really important. So if people like to eat burgers, I know that they're considered unhealthy, but there's different ways. You know, maybe you can switch the beef out for chicken, add some more veggies, have smaller buns, just, you know, yeah. little things like that can make a really big difference. Don't yeah. have fries with it or chips with it. Um, you know, just just small changes rather than just making these massive changes. Another thing, and I hate to, to say it, but people, if they don't like to cook or think that they don't have time to cook, they have to somehow make peace with their kitchen. Now, whether that means that they, first of all, they get in, and maybe give it a good clean and a tidy up, look at use by dates, get rid of some stuff. And maybe this yeah. is an episode on its own to get you mm-hmm. getting your kitchen ready. But I think that if people want to get healthier and lose weight, that they're going to have to do some cooking, whether yeah. they do subscribe to, um, you know, something like HelloFresh or whatever that where they are still cooking, but everything's yeah. portioned. A lot of people can't afford to do that. It's, you know, it's expensive. So a lot of people can't afford to do that. But, you know, maybe go online and look at a couple of recipes or drag one of your old recipe books out that, you know, you bought but never use and try a couple of new things. If you don't like them, so be it. Maybe do a little prep on the weekend, you know, like a, a pasta sauce, like a bolognese type sauce and throw some, extra veg in it and freezer yeah. there you've so got what I, what I 
we've been doing is um is one of my favorite things so just talk about one of the things i've been cooking this week but what i do is i one of my favorite things is a chicken tagine i absolutely love it because i really at the moment crave tasty right want something with taste to it um and then what i do is i i make a massive batch cook of it and i portion them up as two portions per freezer pot um and i make probably 10 10 pots so 20 portions of the chicken tagine put it in my freezer and then life is so much easier because there's days where i just think what should we have tonight okay i'll go and get one of those out in the morning leave it out during the day to defrost and then all i have to do is heat it in the evening and in it it's already got the chickpeas it's got some um it's got some sultanas for a bit of sweetness but there's no fat you put I mean, carrots being... and things like you know all sorts of stuff <laughs> spinach you could put like i, I add I add baby spinach to everything because it just right. sort of melts. You don't even know it's there and it's so good for you. Right. Um, I don't use it. It's basically the chicken is baked before I then sort of cube it to put it in the tagine. Right. It's chopped tomatoes. The only oil that's in it is some olive oil. I then sort of sweat down the onions. Mm -hmm. um, really, really all good nourishing food. And then I just serve it with, um, and I make it on that evening because it's obviously very quick, just some couscous, couscous with it. Ten really minutes. Nice with it. Yeah. Exactly. Right. How food something i really enjoy looking for the That's whole family idea. um that makes me crave I, some now i want some tagine <laughs> oh i i love it and yeah. i use the um the recipe from the bbc online good food recipes there's whole loads of so if you google that there's whole loads right, of chicken right. gene recipes on there um healthy tasty quick because it's been made my dad also then tasted it here and said he loved it so i've even made some for him to take back for his freezer now and it probably takes you an hour maybe to right. cook that but you don't think that's over the course of how many but 10 evenings worth of meals well that that's really you know quick and easy uh -huh. so that's and economical thing. too yeah and if people exactly. don't you know for vegetarians they could just do all veggies with carrots all and veggies, squash and sweet potato them. Corn, corn in it. Corn, corn yeah, yeah. Really, really well. um, and then, and you know, some olives even at the end for some, you know, yeah. good fat. And um, I love putting some toasted sliced almonds, flaked almonds, Ooh, nice. through the course, yeah. course, just or on sprinkle on top. So you've got, yeah. you know, some, some good nuts and um, texture as well. So, yeah. you know, little things like that. But I think the freezer is definitely something that people yeah. – need to embrace because especially yeah. in winter you know you can put lots of veggies in a soup i just um roasted off some had a couple of squash sitting there butternut squash butternut pumpkin sitting there and i just cut them into chunks left the skin on popped them in the oven and yeah. i'm going to go and scrape the um flesh out and just throw huh? a bit of a whiz up a bit of a soup and then i'll freeze that in portions and that's a really good thing for me to have for lunch. Yeah. Is that, you know, just, I don't know. Yeah, I'm home well, working, so it's easy. You're saying if people are not very keen on being in the kitchen, that's one way to get around it because actually what you're going to do is reduce the amount of time because you'll do it in batches. It means that, you know, the time you'll spend there is far less. It's not like every night you've then got to think, right, what am I going to then start from scratch, etc. So right. maybe we can have a bit more time, then you can then help yourself out that way. But yeah. for me, um when you are eating less, then it has got to be tasty. You've got to you've like you said, wake up and look forward to it and, and enjoy it because otherwise if it's bland food, then you just think, well I've already eaten less and now it's I don't even enjoy it then right. that's when you start to eat something else. Yeah. And one another thing I have to tell myself it's like it's okay to be hungry. Because as yeah. soon as my tummy rumbles, I think, oh, what can I eat? You know, and and, and it's all right to, to you know, be hungry. But um, one thing I wanted to talk about too was like people, if they listen to their bodies, like I know a few weeks ago, you know, I was speaking about um, sleeping and you'd noticed mm -hmm. when you had too many carbs like in an evening meal or, you know, yeah. for me, if I eat too late, then I find my sleep is disruptive. So, you know, things like that. So if people aren't sleeping well, maybe look at what they're eating during the day. Yeah. Are they eating too late? I mean, you want to leave, if you can, three hours or four hours before you mm -hmm. go to bed. I know that sounds like a lot of time, but um, and you might have to eat at 
old people's time, as I say, but it's easy to do in winter here. Yeah. Um, or just have a bigger lunch and don't, I don't know, skip dinner. But um, because that's okay too. So it's okay to skip a meal. Yeah. Don't let people tell you that it's not. It is all right. You know, if you're overweight, it's okay to do that. It's just, it's basically, again, calories over your whole day or over your whole week. Isn't right. it? it doesn't mean how you've decided on different days to chunk that down and when you're going to have those calories in. Um, it's it's just a case of if you've then had a, a big lunch, you've had a lot of calories in there, you're going, my body's had enough today. Right. It's had enough. I could eat again, but do I need to? No, I'm, right. I don't. So you just sort of cut that off for that day, don't yes. you? Yes, yes. And that, you know, that's the thing. I think we're raised... Well, I know I was raised where three meals a day and you had to finish everything on your plate. That's such a mindset. But, you know, mm -hmm. really for people, um, you know, I can't say it enough, is there is no quick fix. They have to dedicate, commit to themselves and do this and make it fun. And that's what Sarah and I are here to do is hopefully make it fun for, for people. Yeah. And uh, so, Sarah, we um, had talked about setting, you know, a goal for the coming week and then yeah. talking about how we how we did. Um, I think on the last podcast that we did, I, I can't remember that we did it on that one or the one before. But anyway, um, mine was to lose a couple of pounds. Yes. And I have lost three, 3.1 pounds, which is... Hey. In right. kilos, I think it's about one and a half, 1.6 yeah. kilos, something like that. Um, and then so for my, for the next week, just, you know, small yeah. goal is next I want to focus on portion sizes because okay. that's usually my downfall. But I'm getting better. I am getting uh -huh. better. So that's my thing is to to is portion sizes for the next week okay. and and i'd like to lose another couple of pounds okay my goal was um, movement um exercise but within not a sort of dedicated i'm going out to do exercise i said i wanted to move more right. and move regularly and i have done that i haven't done it every single day um but there aren't that many days that i've missed and i've done quite a variety of movement um i've done some sort of stretching and yoga I've been on my indoor bike one day. That was quite interesting because I haven't been on it since my surgery. Um, Pre-surgery, I could get on there and, and I turned the resistance up to the full, the maximum. So I'm Good really working hard on it. Um, and I would do sort of between 15 and 20 minutes before my surgery. So I got on there in mind thinking, well, I'll do about 10 to 15. About a minute in, I thought, I think I need to revise this situation <laughs> because my, my legs and my muscles. So I did five minutes. Okay, and that's and good. I, my leg muscles really knew about it right. off the leg, but I was so pleased that I'd done it. I was like, look at me. I had to stand on a box to get on and all that right, sort of jazz. Right, right. Um, so I've done that. I've done some movement. And then one of the days I'd intended to do my exercise in the afternoon and in the mornings, or lunchtime, I actually was outside in my garden and I planted 180 tulip bulbs out wow. in the garden. I had no idea quite how physical that is gardening, hard, gardening is a lot of work it is i also probably shouldn't have but i did lift two 10 kilo compost bags down off the table <laughs> well Just... anyway as as i was doing it i was fine the net that night i paid the price i am going to be honest i was like wow um but that and i saw so then i i ditched the afternoon ex, um exercise Good idea. Well, that, it took me an hour and a half to plant all of those bulbs so that i thought was loads of bending stretching lifting that's my exercise. So I've right. done quite a variety. Definitely feeling the benefit of it. Want to keep doing that now. I'd like to um, make that more of a dedicated what I'm going to do every day. So rather than it being so flexible, I'm going to do that. Um, I have also lost a bit of weight, not as much as you. I've lost 2.2 pounds. So I'm pleased I've made some progress, a good start to That's the year. Um, my next goal now is actually being more mindful about making decisions about what I'm going to eat for the day. Right. So up till now, my begin at the beginning of the year, I've just sort of gone wild, just sort of be a bit more clean with what I'm eating and, you know, just making a gentle start. My next week and now going forward, I want to make a more clear decision about my planned meals. I know what I'm eating within that with regards to sort of a calorie count and 
portion size so I don't get caught short so I don't get caught starving and then think I'm just gonna eat anything right uh, and and then because I haven't got anything in or planned I eat something that's really not that good for me and um, so that's my next goal is to be more mindful about making some planning and some choices about what my meals are going to be that I think they're very achievable goals for those that haven't listened to our other podcast episodes um but Sarah has a new hip and I have two um well I guess they're still new two new <laughs> knees um yeah. mine are now a year old but um Sarah's still in the what you're four months in with your hip uh, not quite even yeah not no quite, yeah. yeah she thinks she should be superwoman at this point but I keep reminding <laughs> her it's it's a slow process for everything to to grow back but um yeah so where when now because of this we think okay it's like a second chance almost isn't it yeah um, absolutely yeah to to do that so well i'm going to look forward to uh seeing how you go with your yeah. with your goals and absolutely. just to, to uh reiterate to people that they can do this to not feel like it's just such a mountain that they have to climb. Just small chunks, just, tiny, tiny, yeah, tiny. Yeah. That's all you need to do. And tiny like you were saying, climb. planning. Oh, that's yeah. why I love doing that. I love sitting down and thinking, because I also have to think, what am I going to put on my website too? But um, I love sitting down and planning what I'm going to make for the coming week yeah. and you know sometimes it doesn't always happen but but most of the time it does so and I'm like we should talk about that in in a future podcast I think yeah. we should talk through planning. the benefits of planning and prep and and how we both do it different ways because I'm right. sure it's different right um because I think that's a, a big influence actually oh I think so well. like you said it stops people just grabbing stuff or yeah you know, for me, I I don't have anything around me because I'm more out in the country. But I know that, um, you know, it's too easy to get, just pick up the phone, call, yeah. you know, like here it's DoorDash. You know, COVID um, created this thing where it was great because it kept uh, a lot of restaurants going. Yeah. But, it, but then became easier for people to, you can now, call up and get McDonald's delivered to your house for pizza. You can here in lots of places, but I'm sad but also grateful to say I live in a village where it does not get anything, right. no deliveries of anything yeah, same. at all. Yeah. It's, your, um, it's your actual groceries delivered, but anything else is no. So that's probably a good thing. Right, then... right. I can't even get groceries delivered here, but anyway, yeah. no. Mm. So I think, um, yeah, for for people just to – just small steps – and yes, um you know just find some things that you like things that you like to do for movement things that you like to eat and then just see how you can make them a little healthier and smaller portions but if you know people can start to focus on that and enjoy it all as they go along they'll be in a much better well, place agree. yes well week we can see how um how we've both done but i think we're going to be all right for these goals for next week i think so well i will be chatting to you again next uh, next, next week one. i can't remember what are we talking about next week we are if you remember uh, i know it's question. something great i'm it's, sure <laughs> it's something to do with sarah and i have planned out our episodes and we've got some really great content coming up um but i don't remember what it is is it movement let's keep it as a surprise oh we'll keep there you go that's what we're doing we're just <laughs> building um you know well, the, anticipation. the anticipation yes yes Definitely not memory lapse of two women in the right <laughs> right but anyway, tune in and uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.